Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to see stainless steel, its properties and product form. We have all these courses available on our Thinkific platform. To learn more about these courses, register with the link given in the description. Great. Now let us jump to high alloy steel. And in high alloy, high alloy steel, you know, if we see here, mainly the material which we use is stainless steel. Okay. Now the stainless steel is further classified into austenitic, ferritic, and martensitic. We'll see what are those, and we'll try to see what are the different grades which we use, which we don't use. Okay. So if you talk about stainless steel, it is good for high temperature also. It's good for low temperature also. Very good material. Okay. Only in temperature range of 400 to 600, it has some issues related to sensitization. Okay. Let us start with stainless steel, high alloy steel. Okay. So why that name came? Why we call it as stainless steel? What does it mean? Stainless steel means stainless. There is no stain. Okay, means it's very bright and clear material. Stain free. Absolutely, absolutely right, Bakash. So stain free does not rust. Okay, it's not rusting. So there is you know, no stain there. Okay. Why that is there? Why it is having no strain? No stain due to chromium reacts with oxygen. Very, very, very right. So, chromium is the material you know, which reacts with oxygen and makes a passive layer. Okay, we'll talk about that. So, any steel having a chromium percentage more than 12 is qualified as stainless steel. Any steel having chromium percentage more than 12, it will be qualified as stainless steel. It can go up to 30. After that, it will become chromium. Chromium will become like 30. If it is 40 percent, that means it's chromium steel. You know? So it will change from, it will not be, it will not remain as stainless steel because chromium and nickel. Nickel is what makes the stainless steel. The, uh, if we talk about austenitic and ferritic and martensitic, so nickel is a very austenizing element. Okay, we'll talk about that, we'll not confuse. Okay, so alloying elements for high alloy is greater than 10. So, high alloy steel mostly we use stainless steel. Okay, so if we talk about stainless steel, mainly that chromium is the alloying element greater than 11 to 30 percent. Okay, then it will qualify as stainless steel. Now, as we discussed, why uh, stainless steel is very passive to react is because oxygen in the atmosphere reacts with chromium present in the steel and forms a layer of Cr2O3, okay? which is a very passive compound. It does not react with anyone. So it becomes a layer you know, kind of coating, which is done, automatic coating. So and that is very bright and you know very clean so it looks beautiful that is the you know, we see stainless steel shining right if we carbon steel and stainless steel are kept together you will be able to identify which is stainless steel and which is carbon steel right because of its color it's very bright and that is because of cr2o3 right great so other alloying element which is very important in stainless steel, mainly in austenitic stainless steel, okay, is nickel, right? So nickel is very very important, and we'll talk about that. That is the reason to maintain it in an austenitic zone. Okay. Now corrosion resistant property due to chromium, it's definitely because chromium is the element which is making it a corrosion resistant okay it does not require any painting because you know corrosion uh, this chromium makes layer of cr2o3 which acts as a coating so it does not require any 
additional coating actually it should not be coated or painted you know because if you are painting it you are removing that uh, relation with the atmosphere you know oxygen will not be able to be in contact with chromium so that passive layer will not form so that is the reason we should never you know paint stainless steel so in 240 there are several grades you know 304 304l 316 316l 321 347 there are others also now what 304l indicates what is the difference between 304 and 304l low carbon exactly what is the carbon percentage in 304 what is the carbon percentage in 304 0 0.08 exactly Arash. really good what is the carbon percentage in 304L? 0 0.03. Exactly right. So you can see the difference, right? From 0 0.08 to 0 0.03 percent of carbon. You now that is the variation between 304 to 304L. Okay. What is 321, 347? We'll talk about that. They are called stabilized stainless steel stabilized grade of stainless steel we'll talk about that why you know, these are required so if we have pipe for pipe we have 312 specification with all the same grades okay if it is forging 182 and all the same types fittings sa403 bolting we have b8 and 1948 okay for bolts and nuts okay for tubes we have 213 i hope you understood this part stay tuned for more videos related to materials requirements